Bicycle wheels are a critical part of your ride, and getting them to spin straight and round are an important part of the performance of the bike. Welcome to part three of our wheel chewing series, radial chewing. That's the up and down or egg shape aspect of a spinning wheel. Before we get into this, we should check out how a wheel works where we lay out the concepts of wheel chewing, the structure of a wheel, and you're also gonna need lateral or side to side chewing, which is part two. The wheel of the bicycle is a hoop with a set of spokes that connect it to a hub. Spokes are pulling on the rim from both the right and left side. Wheel chewing is the process of using a spoke wrench to change the spoke tension to improve the runout or spinning straightness and roundness of the wheel. It is this tightening and loosening of spokes that we will use to manipulate spoke tension and true our wheels. Let's take a look at some common tools and get set up to begin truing. First, we need to hold the wheel steady as it spins. One way to do this is to use a chewing stand like these from Park Tool. These are common in bike shops and adjust to many different hub widths and different wheel diameters. Chewing stands help isolate wheel chewing problems and allow for easier and faster work when chewing. If you don't have a chewing stand, you can use the bike to hold the wheel. The wheel should be able to spin freely, such as by putting it in a repair stand. We need a stationary indicator that will help find radial deviations. The chewing stand has these indicator fingers that can be moved up and down as well as in and out from the rim to help us easily find these deviations. If you are chewing in the bike, you can make an indicator by attaching something to the frame like a zip tie. These can be moved up and down to help show radial deviations as the wheel spins in the frame. You'll also need a way to turn the nipple at the end of the spoke. We increase tension by turning the nipple, or the nut, of the spoke system. Looking at the nipple from the outside of the rim, you will turn it clockwise to tighten and counterclockwise to loosen. When working on a truing stand, however, we perceive the nipple is upside down, so this direction is tightening the nipple. When working in the bike, the nipple is right side up, and this is tightening the nipple. Spoke wrenches come in a variety of different sizes to fit different size spoke nipples. It is important to use the correctly sized wrench. Too large a wrench will give a sloppy fit that will likely lead to rounding out the corners and damaging the spoke nipple. If the bike wheel uses a common square shaped nipple, best practice is to measure the wrench flats using a caliper. This gets you the wrench size that fits the nipple as snugly as possible. Otherwise, a multi-sided wrench, such as the SW7.2, fits the three most common square-shaped nipple sizes. There are many different sizes and even shapes for spoke nipples, which we cover in this article on spoke wrench selection at parktool.com. If your wheel has bladed or flat spokes like these, they can twist around as the nipple turns. You will need something to hold the spoke to prevent this, like the BSH-4 from Park Tool. When you begin truing, if the nipple seems hard to turn or they are creaky, they need to be lubricated. Put a drop of lubricant where the spoke exits the nipple and where the nipple exits the rim. Finally, if you're just beginning to learn wheel truing, it can be useful to take the tire off the rim. With the tire removed, the radial deviations you're looking for at the rim will be easier to see. Radial truing can be tricky especially if you're just learning. Expect to go back and forth between radial corrections and the side-to-side -side or lateral corrections as you work your way around the wheel. Let's define the two basic radial deviations we're looking to correct. As the wheel spins, there is a radial deviation where a section of the rim seems to move inward or toward the hub. We call this a low spot. These can be short, say across two spokes. Or these can extend longer, spanning six or more spokes. The other type of radial deviation is a high spot, where the section of rim moves away from the hub. 
Like the low spots, these high spots can span a short or long section of the wheel. The wheel, of course, can have a mix of both high and low spots. Because the rim is somewhat flexible, we tend to average out both until we get an acceptably round wheel. Install the wheel in a truing stand or back into the bike. Before beginning on radial deviations, check that the wheel is reasonably laterally true. If you are not familiar with this procedure, see this video, Lateral Wheel Truing, here. Does not matter whether you are paying attention to the left or right edge of the rim sidewall. In fact, to keep things simple, pull one arm away and block it with a small hex wrench. Spin the wheel and adjust your indicator so that it is sitting below the outer edge of the rim, but not close enough to touch. If you're using a park tool truing stand, use the top of the indicator tip as your reference. Begin by locating the high spot by slowly moving the caliper arm upward until you see or hear it lightly contact the spinning rim. Isolate this high spot by slowly moving the rim back and forth through this area to see where it begins and ends. Correct this radial deviation by moving this section of the rim toward the hub. To make this correction, we're going to tighten spokes from both sides. That's because spokes not only pull from the right and the left side, they also pull the rim toward the hub. We can simulate what tightening will do by grabbing a spoke from the right and left side and squeezing and seeing that that section of rim is going to move toward the hub. For now, give each of the high spot areas one half of a complete turn. The rim is no longer rubbing, so the high spot was reduced. Now we repeat the process. Spin the wheel and continue to locate, isolate, and correct. You may also find longer high spots. This one seems to involve five spokes. To keep this simple, round down to four and tighten only four. If the fifth spoke was needed to correct the high spot, it will show up again as you continue to locate, isolate, and correct. As you proceed, it can occur that there will be some lateral errors created as you correct the radial problems. Check that lateral true is acceptable about every three or four radial corrections. Typically, it is best to begin your radial truing with the high spots. After correcting these, the low spots won't look so low. Again, move the indicator below the rim, but not touching it. Spin the rim to locate the gaps between the rim and the indicator. Find that area where the gap looks the largest. Remember earlier what occurs when two spokes were squeezed. Watch the rim and note that as the spoke tension was relaxed, this section tends to move outward, away from the hub. Isolate the center of the slow spot by moving the rim back and forth in this zone. The section of rim is pulled too close to the hub and needs to be moved away. In this zone, we have two spokes. Loosen each one quarter turn. Move the rim back and forth through the low area to see if there is less of a radial problem. It may take a few attempts to see progress. Continue the process to locate, isolate, and correct. Again, check for lateral errors every few radial corrections. We have seen as you locate, isolate, and correct, the wheel's becoming rounder and rounder. But how round is round enough? Generally, for radial deviation, a one millimeter tolerance is gonna to be good. Remember, a tire's gonna go on top of this and they're not exactly perfect. So one millimeter, that's about 10 sheets of printed paper stacked together. That is what our gauge is gonna look like. We're going to spin the wheel and slowly bring up the indicators until we get a light rub. The light rub indicates we have zero distance between the indicator and the rim. From this point, slowly spin the wheel and sight the gap looking for the largest point. Is the largest gap greater 
of less than one millimeter. This appears here to be the largest looking gap. Using our gauge, easily goes in. This wheel appears to be out of tolerance. It needs more work before we're round enough. If it gives you satisfaction to continue to make the rim rounder and rounder, continue with locating, isolating, and correcting even smaller and smaller deviations. But realize, at the same time, there's going to be some rims where repair is not possible with the spoke wrench. The rim has been impacted and is deformed. The spoke wrench is going to be unable to return it to a normal shape. One aspect to finish your truing is called de-stressing. After you work on the wheel and you've turned a lot of the nipples, the spokes tend to wind up. They need to be brought back to a neutral position. The safest way to do that is actually just go ride the bike. As you ride, the wheels tend to detention slightly, it may pop and ping a few times, but then spokes are stabilized and you're done. Go for a little ride. And that's the basic process for radially truing a wheel. For other aspects of wheel truing, see our wheel truing playlist. For any type of bike repair, visit us at parktool.com. And thanks for joining us.